This clip is just a very brief introduction into univariate modeling and the main ideas and approach. Let's first look at some data. Let me get these in here. We have four data series plotted in nice lines. The first one's GDP, doesn't matter which country. We can clearly see there's some trend in here and um, some of you will recognize this as clearly a non-stationary series. Then we also have the growth in GDP or the difference in GDP. That's what we have here. Basically that's derived from the previous series. That's GDP times T minus the GDP in the previous period. The trend has disappeared so it looks very different. So what we can already see there are very very different characteristics in these time series. And let's look at another example. Here we have the US civilian unemployment rate and we can see these are from 1955 to 2010. Lots of variations and here we have some um, building constructions or spend on building constructions. There's clearly some seasonality pattern here. So these are very very different time series. Despite these differences we want to provide tools that allows us to basically capture the dynamics of these series. Okay, so that's what we want to do and we want to use pretty simple tools to do, the, to do this. So the, the dynamics of the series are in fact captured in what are called the autocorrelation functions or ACFs. So let's look at the respective autocorrelation functions of these four series and here they are. It's in the same order um, if you've used e-views before, you've seen, possibly seen these. So these are the four different series. So what we see here, concentrate on this autocorrelation. So just the left set of bars. We have like an, a, an, a graph flipped 90 degrees. We have autocorrelation values of 0, 1 and negative 1. So 0, 1 and negative 1. And basically on the vertical axis we have what we can see here is the lags. Okay, so what we can see is the autocorrelations of GDP at time t with t minus 1, of t minus 2, t minus 3 and so forth. So GDP has very long persistent autocorrelation. What about the change in GDP? Now that starts much lower and basically dies on very quickly and after three quarter lags there's no autocorrelation. The unemployment rate looks somewhat in between has a higher autocorrelations but a faster decay than GDP and lastly the construction spending there seems to be something really strange going on well that's the seasonality that does this so what we need is processes that allow us to model all sorts of different autocorrelation functions or capture these so here we concentrate on one series at the time let's call it YT. YT could represent any of these four or any other series. So what we're going to do is we're going to propose a process. YT is equal to something. Now what we'll certainly need is what we shall label as epsilon T. This is sort of the randomness comes through here. This is a random term or a random element and any sort of random variation, which of course we have in all in almost all real life series, will enter through this term, okay, through this random element. We will have to assume some properties for this random term. And there's usually two ways, uh, two common, commonly used set of properties. The first one, that's a very strong assumption, is that epsilon t is iid with zero mean and some constant variance. So that's identically and independently distributed. The alternative is that is a somewhat weaker assumption, although there's still quite a uh, quite a bit of restriction in here. So this less strict is that epsilon t is what we call a white noise process. Uh, this is especially uh, those of you who do any finance stuff, that will, you will be familiar with this. And basically the three main properties of white noise is that the expected value of epsilon t is equal to zero, the variance equal to sigma squared, and that subsequent values are uncorrelated. So the expected value of epsilon t, epsilon t minus j is zero for any j unequal to zero. So with that better down, 
let's go back. I left a big gap in this process. So we have yt as some sort of function of that error term or random element, but what what else? Well, as we have univariate modeling, we certainly do not want any other series in here. However, what we will allow to appear in that process are lags for both the terms we already have for yt itself. So we'll allow lags for yt and for the random term or the random element epsilon t. So before we continue, let me just briefly introduce another bit of notation that will soon disappear again, but for, for a very brief moment, moment of time this will be useful. Let's introduce some sort of generic function g. Okay, So let's go back to our process. Basically what we are saying now is that yt is a function of that random element plus some sort of function g that uses the lagged values of yt and lagged values of epsilon t. When I say generic function, really, in in the context of most econometrics courses, we'll actually restrict ourselves to linear functions, although you could use nonlinear ones. Now, it's the properties of g that determines what process we're looking at. If g only uses lagged values of yt, then we call this an OT regressive process, an AR process. An example for this is, for instance, an AR1 process which is stated here, you'll possibly have seen this before. If that function g, however, only uses lagged values of the error term, the random term, then we call this a moving average process. And let me state an example here. We'll use as an example an MA2 process. And here it is. So you can see epsilon t minus 1, epsilon t minus 2 appearing here, and the epsilon t all linearly entering our process for yt. If that function g uses both lags of yt and lags of epsilon t, then we call the resulting process an ARMA process of an autoregressive moving average process. And let me state an example, the combination of the two previous processes, an ARMA 1, 2 process. So the two numbers now state what sort of order the AR and the MA element of the process have. So now you may wonder why on earth do we need such a bewildering array of different processes? Let me just note a few things to answer this question. Firstly, as we have seen before with our real life time series, we know that they can display a very large variety of different dynamics and therefore very different autocorrelation functions. Now if you pick any particular process, let's say an MA2 process, that will allow for a fairly restrictive pattern of the autocorrelation function. We'll learn that when we talk about properties of MA and AR processes. It will be very restrictive. So if we want to be able to capture all sorts of different patterns of autocorrelation functions, then really what we need to do is we need to allow for a range of different type of processes. AR processes, MA processes, they have different, allow for different patterns of autocorrelation functions and combinations of these. And only then can we increase our chance that we can actually fit the autocorrelation function of a real time series. And this is what we in the end want to do and once we've done that satisfactorily we can perhaps use such a process to forecast a time series.